on the toss and deferred, so Florida State will get the ball first. Trey Benson is the deep man for the Seminoles. He returned the opening kickoff of their win against Boston College last week for a touchdown. And Benson gets a shot at it, but he muffs the kick. Still elects to take it out. Didn't have to. And he will not make it to the 20-yard line. So that's where Florida State will start its operation offensively with Jordan Travis, fifth-year quarterback. Started out at Louisville, transferred in 2019, playing the best football of his career right now. He's second in the country in yards per completion. You saw the numbers over the last 10 games, just spectacular, and capped it with a 321-yard effort a week ago. So improved, Dave, this season for Jordan Travis, and Mike Novell stood by his side, believe in him his accuracy really taken another step and as you mentioned off to just a tremendous start this season off play action a shot downfield on the first play and it's incomplete Gavin Holmes defending big Johnny Wilson six foot seven 235 pounds and the pass just a bit underthrown. Similar to what we saw last week against this secondary of Wake for the Clemson wide receivers. Big targets. They made a lot of plays down the field. And Johnny Wilson, just an imposing force at 6'7", 235. Jordan Travis wasting no time taking a shot here early. So on second and 10 from the 17. Another pass play. Travis over the middle. Caught for a first down. The 40 is Johnny Wilson. Arizona State transfer who had 12 catches last year, already 14 this year. That one goes for 24 yards. Now they're going to run a huge lane right between the tackles. Ward inside the 30 and finally shoved out of bounds at the 28 chunk play on the ground 30 yards for Ward well it's really the balance of this offense the ability to throw it with Travis and run the football with Trey Sean Ward Trey Benson excellent hole there on the inside and the vision and burst from Trey Sean Ward with the big game now inside the 30 yard line Florida State has scored touchdowns six of its eight opening halves this season Ward trying to cut it back, and he loses a couple of yards. Brought down at the 29-yard line by Ryan Smenda, four-year starter. Let's check in with Tom down on the field. Well, guys and Dusty, you talk about the confidence and the accuracy. Look at how settled Jordan Travis's feet are in the pocket. He has trained himself from the feet up. He used to be an athlete playing quarterback. Now he's a quarterback that uses his athleticism, but if you're not accurate and you don't make good decisions, you can't function at quarterback. That's his two best areas of improvement. One yard loss, play action, and a tight end screen inside the 20 yard line. Douglas to the 15 and down near the 12. Just the second catch of the year for Marquiston Douglas. That goes for 16 on the screen. I love the play design here, Dave. It's a little screen to the tight end. Maurice Smith, the center, as well as the big right tackle. Turn tight out in front, paving a path for a big game. Travis fires over the middle. transfer who's from Tampa his father Michael played for the Buccaneers his brother Michael Jr. starring for the Colts in the NFL right now little play action pass get those linebackers and safeties up middle of the fields wide open an absolute dime and a strike from Jordan Travis to Micah Pittman as flawless an opening drive as Florida State's had all season long Took just under two minutes, six plays, 83 yards. The Wake Forest defense struggled last week and a slow start for the Demon Deacons to start this game. Penalty marker down after the made point after. Thrown at the two-yard line. We said at the outset that Jordan Travis playing the best football of his career. 12 men on the field, that is the play. And boy, Travis 
was delivering dimes on that opening possession for Mike North. For the last six years, they do not have a winning regular season, but you saw how well they've started this year. And already off to a 7-0 lead against Wake Forest, but now it's Sam Hartman's turn. And he's coming off a historic game last week against Clemson. He enters today's game sixth in ACC history, both passing yards and passing touchdowns. And he had six a week ago, which not only set the school record, but tied a conference record. But they lost. They had a lead in the fourth quarter, had the lead in overtime in Winston-Salem, but eventually fell to the Tigers. DJ Uyunglele outdueled Hartman. They both were great. DJ just a little bit better. We'll see how Hartman bounces back. A run play on first down. Some room for Justice Ellison, and it's a gain of about nine. Well, this offense is fascinating. You're not going to see it run like this anywhere else in college football. And it's this low mesh right at the point where Sam Hartman makes his decision and he forces the defense to show their hand. Safety comes up, easy shot over the top. See plenty of that all throughout this ball game today, Dave. And Morin on the wide receiver screen with the 17th catch of the season, 92nd of his career. As many of you know, Sam Hartman did not start the season on the active roster. It's just his fourth game. Made his debut September 10th after undergoing surgery for a blood clot back in August. And here's what you're talking about. Moving up in the pocket. The pass is knocked away. Incomplete. Kalen Deloach got a hand in there to break up the pass intended for Jaeger Bull. Wake is without its starting tight end, Blake Whitehart, due to injury. And so they got Jaeger Bull and Troy Bull. Those are the only two guys available at that position. Todd Harden was going to take a shot at Donovan Green. Like he had the one-on-one -on -one he typically looks for. Over the middle, and it's pulled in near the line to gain by Donovan Green, who had two touchdown grabs against Clemson a week ago, a pickup of nine. They operate this offense so fast. Sam Hartman, a quarterback sneak, and second effort. Let's see where they blow it dead. He did not get it. He comes up short. Florida State is playing without one of its best defensive linemen. And Fabian Lovett, also Jared Verse, banged up as well. So still a good job up front to force a fourth down, and Wake's going to go for it. They're two best defensive linemen on that note, Dave. And Dave Clawson rolling the dice there early in his own territory. They run it, and they get it to midfield. Justice Ellison plows forward. A flag down, though. Picked up about five yards. Coming back, though. Holding. Holding on Wake. So you would imagine Wake Forest would just punt it away here. Dave Clawson talking with Jaeger Bull. That's, again, we mentioned, it's not just in the passing game, Dusty. When you have those two guys, Bull and Bull, have played a combined 18 snaps. Yeah, this down year. to their fourth and fifth string tight ends. As you reference, Whitehart, an excellent pass catcher we saw just a week ago, but also in the run game affects him so much. You see his absence already playing a role on the opening possession. Well, and Dusty, it puts more pressure on those outside one on ones because Florida State doesn't have any reason to respect the interior passing game. Mora on to punt, Micah Pittman who had the touchdown catch on the opening drive, is back as the return man. There is some wind here, and you see it get caught up in the wind and check up and go out of bounds around the 27. So Florida State's offense back on the field. Four minutes in, already leading 7-0, 37-yard punt, and no return. Now Jordan Travis has been lights out the last few games. And in talking with Jordan this week and the coaching staff, they say the biggest difference is confidence. It was gone. He had lost confidence completely. And he wasn't the only one on this Florida State team. But Mike Norvell and the coaching staff have been encouraging him. His teammates have been encouraging him. He's really stepped up as a leader. And he's becoming one of the best QBs in the ACC. Fantastic start. It's also worth noting Mike Norvell, his head coach, also the offensive coordinator, calling plays for the first time since his last year there at Memphis. Here's Trey Sean Ward trying to cut it back. And the ball comes out. 
It was recovered momentarily by Wake, but then Pittman hops on it. Wake had it. They couldn't gobble it up. And Pittman with a smart play to jump on it. Opportunity missed here by the Demon Deacons. And what a great hustle play here by Kobe Turner, the defensive tackle who's been playing outstanding for Wake up front. Hustling to the football, punching that out. And Micah Pittman, right place, right time to get on top of that football. Just a whiff by Mustafa, trying to jump on that ball. Travis pulls it back, and his arm hit. The ball looked like it was going forward, meaning the arm was going forward, and they do rule it an incomplete pass. That was Rondell Bothroyd, who had eight sacks last year, already a couple this year, that gets to the quarterback. A really nice job here by Bothroyd. Plays that zone read perfectly. And good position when he sees past the clear, gets up the field, gets that right hand up. Nice play by the junior defensive end. One second earlier, and that hits the arm. And then the ball comes out, and it's probably a fumble. Instead, you saw clearly their forward pass. Now it's third down and six. Low snap, scooped up, and Travis Pass is caught, but well short of the first down. Wilson with a second grab. Good coverage by Chalen Garns. Transfer from Navy a year ago, and so here comes the punt team. And Jalen Garns has been playing some great football on the back end of this defense. Good tackling, safety, and that's a tough challenge right there on a six foot seven wide receiver. Stays with him in man to man across the middle and gets that big pass catcher to the ground immediately. You'll let him catch him. You've got to tackle that big guy now. No doubt, Tom. Mastro Mono is deep. You see the shifting by Florida State. And Taylor Morn deep for Wake Forest. It's a big stop considering how good Florida State looked on that first drive. Morin has to back up a little bit, has to adjust, and then immediately at the 20-yard line and dumped. Great play downfield by Azaria Thomas as we go to Kevin Agandi in the studio. Dave Dusty, we're chasing history. Aaron Judge looking to set the AL record with 62 home runs and pass Roger Maris. 61 years ago, Maris hit home run number 61 on this date. Pick things up 8 nothing right now on the Yes Network. And Judge in his fifth at bat in the Bronx. Michael Kay on the call. Upstairs, 1 0. Watkins didn't like that ball. He tosses it into the Yankee dugout. And it's another specially marked up ball that they put in when Judge comes to the plate. So Judge strikes out, so the 62 watch continues. Is Aaron Judge trying to break Roger Maris's American League record? Here, Wake Forest on the move to the 32-yard line midway through the first quarter, trailing 7-0. Pass play here. Hartman throwing to Turner up in the backfield, couldn't handle it, and then got belted by Dent to make sure that he didn't hang on near the 30-yard line. They don't throw the running backs out of the backfield very much in this offense. Just five catches collectively between Turner and Ellison. And as you've seen throughout this drive while they were showing Aaron Judge, the patience within this offense from the quarterback making a decision, the running backs finding a hole, it's impressive. Turner in trouble in the backfield, and down he goes. Slicing in there to make the play was DJ Lundy, who sometimes plays fullback on the other side of the ball. That's a loss of a yard or two. Really nice job here by Lundy, just picking his way, as I kind of referenced Turner. Very patient with the ball and a nice tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Adam Fuller's been dialing up a lot on third down this season. Let's see if he comes after Hartman. On third and 12, Hartman surveying, fires to an open man, and a nice grab by A.T. Perry, picking up 15. And a first down, second catch for Perry. Often the go-to guy for Hartman on third down. No pressure and plenty of time for Hartman to stand firm in the pocket. And boy, the catch radius of A.T. Perry is so impressive. 6'5", long arms, goes up and grabs that football. First team all ACC last year, Hartman as Somehow Perry got free. The mesh messed with everybody because all of a sudden Perry was open. It took a little while, but eventually Hartman saw it, and they're inside the 10 now, first and goal. 
It's so unique. Dave Clawson has done such an incredible job with this. Big reason why they've been to six straight bowl games and took Clemson to the wire last week. Here's Hartman again, and that one too long for Perry. He did have Renardo Green in coverage. And what's fascinating is you'll see Sam Hartman there walk up with the running back almost all the way to the line of scrimmage before he pulls it out and tries to locate his big wide receiver. The offense is fascinating and tough to stop, but especially when you've got a quarterback like Hartman making the decisions. Play 11 of this drive for Wake Forest. Second and goal on the seven-yard line. Hartman to the air, steps off, being chased. He's inside the five, and he gets drilled at the two-yard line by Jamie Robinson. First team all ACC last year. It'll be third and goal from the two. And talking with the Wake coaches, it's not surprising to see how sharp Wake Forest looks offensively. We wondered how would they bounce back after a heartbreaking loss. Dave Clawson told us we got 39 players on our roster in at least year four. So it's not surprising that they look good here trying to bounce back and tie the game. But a huge play here in third and goal from the two. They'll keep it on the ground with Turner. And pushing the pile. May have gotten in. Waiting for a signal. They're going to mark him short. It'll be fourth and goal. See Turner just trying to pick and find his way. Nowhere for him to get in. I think Dave Clawson's going to go for this here, Dave. Do you agree with the move? I do. Drive all the way down the field. This defense for Wake Forest throughout the course of the season has given up a lot of points. Put together this drive. They don't want to come away with just three. It's another time you miss Blake Whitehart, the tight end. He's got three touchdown catches. Mike Norvell is going to call a timeout here. Timeout for the state. The first of the half. So two timeouts remaining for the Seminoles. Fourth and goal for Wake. Looking to tie the game here in Tallahassee. It was an instant classic last week at Wake Forest. The Demon Deacons, though, lost in double overtime to Clemson 51-45. First loss of the season for Wake. Sam Hartman had six touchdowns in that game. What will he do here on the 13th play of drive number two of the game for Wake Forest? It started on their 20. They're at the one-yard line, fourth and goal. Heavy people in here right now, Dave. Multiple tight ends in. Feel like they're going to give this to Christian Turner. It is Turner. No signal yet. Boy, it looked like he got in, and there's the signal. Touchdown, Wake Forest. Christian Turner with his third rushing touchdown of the season. That pays off a great drive from one yard out. No question. Dave Clawson saying we're going to line up and run it right at him. Extra offensive lineman, two tight ends in the game. And Christian Turner, 5'11", 200 pounds, pulls his way into the end zone. Just barely breaking the goal line. Excellent way to cap off a fantastic 13-play, 80-yard drive. Dusty, these backs, they are so powerful with a forward lean. You never yes. see them not fall forward. 100%. Same with Ellison Turner. Yep. That's a great point, Tom. Always leaning forward, falling forward. Helped enable Turner to get in the end zone on fourth down. Replay looking at this, again, almost impossible to tell because you couldn't see the ball carrier or the ball, whether he got in. But ruling in the field was a touchdown. You would have to think that it would stand, even if they spend more time than they currently are. Keep in mind, too, here, not just with this snap, but the rest of this game, especially if it comes down to the end, they have a backup long snapper in. Will Cobb, you see him there, number 32. Matthew Dennis on for the point after. Smooth operation there, and the game is tied at seven. Fort Florida State's impressive touchdown drive. 13 plays, 80 yards, and on fourth down, they punch it in from a yard out. See if they kick it to Trey Benson. This is in the field of play, and he will not call for the fair catch. Benson, past the 20. 
And a good job at the 27 yard line by Fields. Well, as we Martin, mentioned, the balance of Florida State offense, they've run the ball so well, leading the ACC, and the threat of run really has the linebackers and safeties up the field, setting up play action pass. And you'll see on both these occasions on the opening drive, middle of the field wide open for Jordan Travis to locate targets and execute this offense. Four for six for Travis with a touchdown pass, six touchdown passes, only one pick so far this season. Lawrence Toa Philly is the running back. They like to throw it to him sometimes and sometimes downfield. Play fake, Travis in trouble, gets out of there. And Tucks slides and then gets hit at the 22, right in front of an official, but they're not gonna throw the flag. Tyler Williams had pressure. And then you saw the slide, and clearly there was contact after the slide. Very surprised here. Jasheen Davis isn't going to draw this flag. Typically, once a quarterback goes to the ground, gives himself up, it'll allow any kind of contact right on the knee of Jordan Travis. That's, that's a head-scratching no flag. Travis with a quick throw to the flat. Dragging everybody all the way to midfield. That's a gain of 24. Love the kick out block by Micah Pittman on the outside. And this is 6'7, 235. We referenced it earlier. So tough to tackle as he runs through multiple Demon Deacon defenders for a big pickup. It's already three catches, 52 yards for Wilson. Travis in trouble, gets drilled as he hoisted, and boy, Pittman was wide open, but there was enough pressure on Jordan Travis where he really couldn't settle down before he had to launch it. Was good pressure. One thing that illustrates, he wasn't able to locate Pittman running wide open on the over route, but I stay down the field. He's got that athleticism, the escapability, and in previous years, he's just looking to run. In these situations this year, he's constantly keeping his eyes down the field, trying to locate a target, unable to connect there with Pittman. Here's Toa Philly. And after a gain of one, he's knocked down by Davis. At 6.30 Eastern, the ACC Huddle crew will have highlights and complete breakdowns of all the afternoon games and get you ready for Georgia Tech and 24th ranked Pitt at 8. And after the game, full post-game show to wrap up the night on ACCN and the ESPN app. Five games today involving ranked teams. Two in the ACC, ABC Prime, Clemson, NC State. Battle of the top 10 teams. Of course, game day was on hand in Clemson today. So third down and nine for Travis. Pressure off the edge. Travis on the move. Throws it downfield and high. Going for Malik McLean. Fourth down. Boy, after that opening drive where Florida State went right down the field on Wake Forest defense, Brad Lambert, the D coordinator, has set them up well the last two possessions. And watch the way they use three Malik Mustafa. Malik Mustafa, really talented safety. Used him to spy a couple of weeks ago against Vanderbilt. I expect to see that all throughout the day here, Tom. Well done. Yeah, and I'll tell you, the left side of the offensive line for Florida State really struggling to handle Jasheen Davis, number 30. They've got to get that short up with the left tackle, Darius Washington. No Robert Scott and no Bless Harris for the Seminoles at tackle. On angle toward the near side, and it takes a Florida State bounce inside the 10-yard line. Master Mata with a good punt. They'll mark it at the nine as we go to the studio. Day time now for our mayhem moment, brought to you by Allstate. To the Horseshoe, Rutgers needs all three phases to win the day here, Booger, and they get a big break here on the punt. Yeah, punt returner trying to do too much. You probably want to let that one bounce, but Rutgers is Johnny on the spot, Cam. Uh, Mecca Abuka fumbles, and then Evan Simon to Sean Ryan. First ever lead for Rutgers in nine games against Ohio State, and then the Buckeyes said enough. Yeah, when in doubt, give it to the running backs for Ohio State. They're the best group in the country. Mayan Williams, a pair of touchdowns. Buckeyes up 14-7. to Back to you guys. All right, gents. Here at 7-7, Wake Forest possession. Ellison, nice run. Out to the 17, gain of seven on the play. Tatum Bethune, the leading tackler on the takedown. Seeing this Wake Forest rushing attack have a lot of success. 
Watch. You see Ellison able to get to the edge on the right side. Defensive end comes crashing in. No linebacker over the top. Going to run it again. And a backside play is made for a loss at the 16-yard line. By Brown, Shaheem Brown. At the 16 for a loss of one. Really well timed there by Shaheem Brown. Gets to the line of scrimmage right after the ball is snapped. Knives through and makes a quality play from the backside. You talked about the run game has been good until that play. They struggled rushing the ball this year. Hartman throwing it, and it's a first down catch for Mr. Reliable A.T. Perry. Out to the 23, Junior, who's from Lake Worth, Florida. Comes into this game with 19 career touchdowns, fifth-year senior, 26 consecutive games with a grab. Saw them last week take a lot of shots down the field, working much more the intermediate routes here so far. To the air again, Hartman looking, firing down the seam, and we'll see if they throw a flag. Yep, here comes a flag for interference. The defender had his back turned to the ball. Never look, Jaeger Bull put up his arms, and DJ Lundy guilty of pass interference. And Lundy's in good shape. Pass interference. Defense number 46. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. He's in good shape here, Dave. Just never gets his head turned around and continues with his forward momentum through the wide receiver. That is, uh, by definition, pass interference. Got to get that head turned around and make a play on the football. Hartman saw that the back was covered so he just takes off and runs and spilled by Robinson pick up a five or six that time seeing really good decisions made here so far Tom by Sam Hartman third time he's elected to run to get positive yards yeah and I'm not so sure that wasn't designed because they're counting numbers in the box and Florida State was light in the box and then when the the back went out they got even lighter and that was a nicely designed play Sam Hartman tucking it getting positive yards look at the two high safety here that gives him a light box Run it again, and oh, what a sweet move by Justice Ellison. Eventually, Florida State's D swarms, but that was a great move. He probably should have gained nothing. He picked up about five, close to the first down. Looks like he'll be just short. Third down coming up, final seconds here of the opening quarter. She said sweet feet there by Justice Ellison with the jump cut, leaving the Seminole defender hugging air. One quarter in the books, and teams meeting in Clemson, NC State taking on Clemson on ABC, the ESPN app. Also, Pat McAfee hosts our ESPN2 telecast. 18 unbeaten FBS teams left, four in the ACC, all in the Atlantic Division, and playing on ABC right now, and then tonight, you got unbeaten Florida State. Wake Forest trying to hand the Knolls their first loss. They just picked up third and one with a run by Justice Ellison. We touched on just how veteran this Wake Forest team is and you know, the close win over Liberty by one point yeah. and the heartbreaker against Clemson, but they have responded after getting down 7-0 two minutes into this game. Hartman to the air, setting up, looking deep, got a man if the ball's there. It's overthrown inside the 10, going for A.T. Perry, who had the defender, Jari and Jones beat. Tough to overthrow A.T. Perry, and typically a pass Sam Hartman doesn't miss on, just a little bit too much on the football. Nice job there off the line of scrimmage by A.T. Perry coming clean, and a missed opportunity from Sam Hartman. Normally so accurate, throwing the ball down the field. They'll take a lot of shots, too, on second and 10. That one zipped in there inside the 45. Jamal Banks we had a big day against Clemson with a couple of touchdowns a week ago. He'll come up just short of the line to gain third down and about two. And he has really emerged as a premier wide receiver in the ACC. Four touchdowns in the last two weeks. Worked a lot in the offseason, building his confidence, his chemistry with Sam Hartman. Got great body control and a good route runner. Hartman's going to hand it off, and getting the edge is Ellison inside the 35, inside the 20, inside the 10, and then finally smoked out of bounds. On the right. 62 on the right. But inside the 10-yard line, Official timeout. first and goal game of 34. Devontae Gordon on the right side doing a good job helping allow Ellison to get to the edge. 
A big pickup, this Wake Forest rushing attack. It's been impressive here early. Got an injured Florida State defensive lineman, Malcolm Ray, back in a moment. I ask you the last few years, today's atmosphere feels like 2011, 2012, 2013, when Jameis Winston was here. And Florida State won the national championship nine years ago. Been a rough last five years. And they might trail 7-7. And inside the five-yard line is Justice Ellison. They split carries between Ellison and Turner. Turner got the last goal to go situation and scored. It'll be second and goal from the four. Little counter action there for Ellison. Good vision to get back inside. Seen a lot of things off the edge. Ended up between the tackles there for the running back. Hartman on the rollout. Nowhere to go. Now throws. And just behind Perry. It'll be third down and goal. That's an outstanding job by the safety, Jamie Robinson, plastering to A.T. Perry. Hartman bought time, bought time, could not get his big target to come open. Well defense there on second down. A.T. Perry's got to be somebody you locate and identify in this spot. And if he threw that inside, I think Robinson would have picked it off. Up top, singled up to the boundary. On third and goal, Hartman to the air. lineman picked up a defender late and that allowed Hartman a little extra time to find Perry for the go-ahead score well man Sam Hartman as you mentioned buying himself some time keeps his eyes down the field and it's smart by A.T. Perry to work away from the coverage of a Marion Cooper got to stay with him throughout the entire route kind of slips A.T. Perry comes open and Hartman finds him for six and it's 14 to 7. Well, let's take a look at this great block by Justice Ellison. Delayed blitz here by DJ Lundy. And Ellison and these running backs do such a good job blocking and protecting. That by Sam Hartman just enough time to roll eight, roll out, and locate his big wide receiver. What a great job there by Ellison, Tom. Yeah, there's no question. I think that's the most undervalued part of this offense is with the slow mesh. And I know it wasn't there on that pass play, but you've got the quarterback a yard and a half from the line of scrimmage, and the running back essentially becomes your A-gap blocker, and he's right in front of you. He really created that play and allowed Sam Hartman to flush and make the throw. Ball fell off the tee. Wake Forest wasn't even sure that they were going to be able to make it down here. In fact, they moved up their flight yesterday, not because of the weather here in Tallahassee, but the path of the flight, there would have been significant turbulence, and they may have not arrived in Tallahassee. They moved their flight up yesterday morning, got here a little bit earlier, and they have a 14-7 lead. Kickoff from Mora, and Benson... Boy, should have just let that go out of bounds, and it did, I think, because he stepped out of bounds when he touched the football. The ball will be placed at the third. So let's go to the studio and check in with Kevin. The ball will be placed at the third. Midday in week five over on ESPN. Penn State up 7-0 against Northwestern. ESPN 2 undefeated Kansas up 7-0 against Iowa State. SEC Network, it's scoreless between AM and Mississippi State. And ACC Network, Mac Brown, North Carolina up 21-3 against Virginia Tech. Back to you. I think you'd all agree, too, Kev and Dusty and Tom, that it, it's Kansas-Syracuse National Championship. This is the way this is trending right now. No question. Absolutely. You're feeling it, Dave. You're feeling it. Schrader and... By the way, just throwing Jaylen it out there. Daniels, if Heisman Syrac Trophy candidates? If Syracuse beats Wagner, they're 5-0 and for the first time since 1987. Where'd you go to school? <laughs> Do I even need to answer? <laughs> Travis in trouble in the backfield. And falls forward. The ball came out at the 38-yard line. Wake's got it. Travis turns it over. Jalen Hudson was there defensively for Wake Forest. 
Well, it's a design quarterback run. Watch the effort from 15 Tatum Bethune from the backside. He's going to chase this down and make an excellent play, ripping underneath and getting that ball out. Outstanding job by Bethune. Hey, you watch Hudson here come backside, forced the fumble, and then hard to see who came up with the football. Might have been Hudson for Wake. Thank you for that, Dave. Yeah, Jaden Hudson, excellent job with the effort, punching that ball loose for the Demon Deacons defense. Wake Forest so good at taking the ball away from opponents. Hartman grabbed and thrown down at the 40-yard line by Robinson. Wake Forest had 18 consecutive games with a takeaway until last week. Did not get one against Clemson. They had six against Florida State last year and a Demon Deacon victory. 34 of the last 36 games, Wake has at least one takeaway. See Adam Fuller there dialing up a little bit, bringing Jamie Robinson from depth. Hartman going to throw, checks it down, wide open as Christian Turner. A breakdown defensively, nobody had the back. And it's a gain of about 18, and a first down. It looks like Kalen Deloach. Man-to-man -man coverage, running back out in the flat. And as he's working his way out, stays with the running back, or the wide receiver over the middle. Just a blown coverage out in the flats and an easy pickup for Wake Forest. Turner straight ahead, dragged down at the 20 yard line. After a gain of two, Patrick Payton making another play defensively. We touched on this at the outset, deserves to be repeated. Fabian Lovett, Jared Verse not playing. Two best defensive linemen for Florida State. Verse was such a force in that opener against LSU. Going to be a real difference maker and Lovett, the leader of this football team. Hartman stepping up. And he throws to the end zone more and can't come up with it. Boy, Hartman took a shot that time from Brown. He stood in there, though, and almost completed the pass downfield. Boy, Hartman is just so calm with bodies around him. Stands tall right there, bodies in his face as he works his way up, stepping up into the pocket. And this is an outstanding job by Kevin Knowles, getting the right arm up to get in the pass breakup. Big play defensively here for Florida State. After the turnover, quick change. Wake is on third and long. Hartman downfield. Ball is caught inside the five. And into the end zone for the touchdown. Donovan Green with an incredible grab. Excellent coverage by Florida State. But Hartman hooks up with Green again. They did it twice last week against Clemson. Gonna bring the blitz, blitz right in the face of Hartman. He stands firm in there. And how about the ball placement? Back shoulder and the one-handed grab by Donovan Green, bringing it in and getting to the end zone. Dusty, that's the play. That is the play that Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator, said his guys had to make this week because Clemson did not make them last week. Florida State's going to have to bat some of those down or get a turnover because that is where Wake Forest is really good with their outside targets. Green's in perfect position there, Tom. Yep. Just ball put right on that outside arm and an excellent job bringing it in by Green. Point after makes it 21 to 7. Wake Forest, that's two touchdown passes for Hartman after six a week ago. 87 for his phenomenal career. And they make the most of this fumble by Travis. On third down and long, they score a touchdown and go up by 14 on the road. Locker room handling what happened last week. And then the uncertainty of whether this game would be played at all because of the hurricane. And this veteran team has shown up off to a great start. Here's Trey Benson, big return past the 40. Oh, the kicker made the play at the 45. Otherwise, that would have been two touchdowns in two weeks for Benson. Let's take a look at this slow mesh weight runs and give you an idea of just how difficult it is on opposing defenses. The linebackers, the safeties, they don't know what to do. Whether it's pass, you see, linebacker frozen, stepping up, doesn't know where to go. Middle of the field is open. Same thing on run. Confusion. Deloach, Bethune, don't know what's what. Can't tell where it is. That one's a give. And it freezes those backers just long enough to spring the runs off the edge. Great response by Wake Forest after Florida State scored two minutes in and Wake could do nothing. 
on its opening drive. It's 21-7, Demon Deacons, but a long way to go. Good start with the kickoff return by Benson, and now here's Treshawn Ward moving the pile all the way past the line of the game to the 45 of Wake Forest. Yeah, Dylan Gibbons, Notre Dame transfer down there blocking. This is, this is the bread and butter. Their counter, pull backside guard, pull the tight end across the formation, and a good piece of physical running from Treshawn Ward. Get back to running the football on the ground. In trouble in the backfield is Ward, wrapped up by Kobe Turner, a grad transfer from Richmond, who said he made a business decision to come to Wake because he thinks it'll help him get to the next level. Well, Kobe Turner's been fantastic for this defensive line. You see him just get up the field right now, north and south, create that penetration, and force the negative play. So three yards set back. Second down and 13. Play action. Travis looking downfield to the sideline and complete. He was going for Johnny Wilson. Seems like secondary for Wake has settled down since early on. Absolutely. Well done out there on the edge by Isaiah Wingfield. This entire defense has settled down. First drive could not really get their footing. And now a crucial third and long for Jordan Travis in this offense. Florida State 14th in the country on third down. Travis just five for 10, passing the ball. Third down and 13. Got to get to the 35 of Wake Forest. And Travis gonna throw it underneath out of the backfield, Benson, and he's got no shot. So a gain of only four. It's fourth down and 10. They're 0 for 3 on third down today. Florida State will have to punt it, try to pin Wake Forest deep in its own end. Yeah, Tom, you know, that was a very conservative play call there, almost as if that was the idea from the snap. It was a drop eight, only rush three, wasn't much pressure. Eight guys sitting back in zone coverage, eyes on the football, and as soon as Benson gets the ball, it's Demon Deke, it's all over him. Yeah, and I think they're just, they're resigned themselves to the fact that if we keep the ball in front of us, we're going to be a good enough tackling football team to make Florida State earn it. Mastro Mano is pretty good at pinning teams deep. He did it earlier. This time, can't, though, as that took a hop forward. He did it earlier and landed it about the 12, and it went out of bounds at the 10, but not this time. Well, you think about the end of Jimbo Fisher's run here. I mean, they were 59-9. and They were a national power from 12 to 16, won the national title in 2013. Then towards... The end of Jimbo Fisher's run here. They had a 500 season. He left. Willie Taggart came over. That didn't work, so they hired Mike Norvell. 0-4 last year, but 4-0 this year. First time since 2015. Ranked for the first time since 2018. And they got a tough schedule here. Two huge games after this one, NC State and Clemson. So we'll know for sure whether Florida State's back in the next few weeks. Waiting for a hole to open is Justice Ellison, and it's a gain of three. Second and seven coming up. One of the premier programs in college football for three decades at least. And just odd to see them not talked about as one of the marquee programs. And Mike Norvell is doing a nice job here in year number three. To the sideline and complete. Donovan Green, the intended receiver. Renardo Green, no relation. And coverage that time in a third and longest. Crowd starting to come alive again now. Take a look off your right side. Five, Jared Verse is in the game. Has come in on a couple of third downs. Playing hurt, but trying to give this team a spark, especially on third down. But you're right, we've barely seen him because he's injured. Just trying to give him something in a couple of plays. Hartman's pass is caught, and breaking a tackle to get the first down. Keyshawn Williams. That's another third and long that Wake Forest is able to convert. 13-yard gain. Well, that's good strength there by Williams to fight through, but if you're Florida State, you got to get Williams on the ground, short of the sticks. Three no defenders in the area, and Williams takes Dent for a ride in the first down. Justice Ellison running here, straight ahead. 
out to the 43 yard line. It's a team that had 21 rushing yards against Liberty a couple weeks ago, but they've been able to run the ball successfully against Florida State here. They've got over 100 rushing yards here in the first half. Injured Seminole. Jarian Jones, defensive back, shake it up. Hard on his shoulder there, Boog. And then the next throw, that doesn't look good. Yeah, something's very uncomfortable. You can see he had his kind of right arm extended, put a lot of pressure on his shoulder. He goes in the tent, and you can tell that shoulder doesn't feel good. Yeah, from the tent to the locker room, we'll keep you up to date. Freshman Jalen Milrow is in. He has a rushing touchdown from the quarterback position. Get hey, back to you. All right, Kevin, obviously we'll keep a close eye on what's going on there with Bryce Young. Alabama up big on Arkansas. Wake Forest up big on Florida State. And looking to add to the lead, first down pickup, Justice Ellison. At this point, you wonder if Florida State need a takeaway because Wake Forest can do no wrong offensively. They're picking up third and long and scoring on fourth and goal running with ease against that Florida State front. Which well, is outstanding patience and vision there by Justice Ellison. Hartman to the air, delayed pressure. Hartman, though, gets rid of it, but it's incomplete. It was behind Bull, the tight end. He had Kalen Deloach come roaring into the backfield, but Hartman's so smart, saw it, just couldn't complete the pass. Just a little bit outside is intended target. Nice job on the pressure by Deloach. It's so hard to rush him, though, Dusty. I mean, even if you get in his face, the ball's out. You might touch him, but he's not taking any direct shots. Second and 10 on the 48 of FSU. Hartman to the air again from the pocket. Caught near the line to gain. Jamal Banks at the 39. They'll mark him a yard short. Good tackle by Green and Robinson to make sure he didn't stretch his ball out and get the first down. Nice route there on the dig by Banks. Easy pitch and catch. Wake 7 of 9 on third down. Ellison falls forward. Did not get it. Leonard Warner on the stop. You would imagine Wake would go for it here on fourth down, right? Yes, I do anticipate they go for it. It's a huge fourth down, potentially for the Seminole defense. They bring in an extra offensive lineman and Spencer Clapp and a tight end as well for fourth down and one. Ellison gets the first down and more. They just gash him right up the gut for 10 yards to the 29 on fourth and one. Boy, Javante Nash, 53, really does an excellent job washing everything down. For an and injury. Ellison hits it right behind him. Injury timeout, official stoppage here with 6.15 remaining in the half, and Wake Forest looking to extend a 21-7 lead. Don't forget Sunday NFL countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, one-on-one -on -one with Jalen Hurts, who's playing great football right now, and then a Monday night, Rams, Niners, NFC West showdown. Hartman to throw, ball is tipped at the line and incomplete. Dennis Briggs was there, got a hand up, knocked it down. The link there from Dennis Briggs. Defensive end can play inside, outside. And as Tom touched on earlier, tough to get a real clean shot on Sam Hartman. Just gets his hands up and gets a paw on the football. How about that pass protection by Justice Ellison again? Keen Dent coming from his safety spot. And Ellison just dumped him. Second and 10. They're going to run Ellison. And he's drilled. Tatum Bethune, transfer from UCF, where he was a starter last year. Drilled him in the hole. Third he's, down. He's been impactful for this defense. A thumper. You feel his presence when he hits you. Big stop there on second down. And Florida State. Get off the field on third down. Looks like they're bringing pressure. Wake 7 of 10. Third and long. Hartman in trouble. Gets rid of the pass downfield. Incomplete. Lot of contact. And a flag. Donovan Green being covered downfield by Cooper. 
And they're going to get Cooper for pass, pass interference. interference. This will be a first down. Defense number 13, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. But how about Sam Hartman's ability to hang in there knowing the shot is coming and at least give the officials the opportunity, right, to throw the flag? Even if the ball's not caught, you get a pass interference. Saw it time and time again a week ago from Clemson. Dial up a zero blitz, too many to protect. Just going to trust Donovan Green out there in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And I just thought it was panic out of Cooper. Just panics. He's in good shape, and he panics and grabs onto Green, drawing the easy flag. Wake Forest looking to go up 28-7. to Trailed 7-0 two minutes into the game. Hartman, a couple of pump fakes, and now just throws it away. There's a penalty marker down as well. Offensive lineman down the field, thinking that was going to be a screen. Other than that, though, the, the poise and leadership of Sam Hartman on full display after losing last week the way they did. Holding offense number 55, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. It's on Jurgens the center, but Sam Hartman, 23 years old, a guy that, and talking with Dave Clawson yesterday, said he's grown so much as a leader. The message that Clawson gave to him about a year and a half ago was, Learn to be a leader at all times, even when things aren't going well for you. If others are having success on the team and you're struggling, don't hang your head. He really took that to heart and has become the face of this team. And the voice. First and 20, Hartman looking, throwing, end zone. Diving attempt, incomplete. Green couldn't come up with that back shoulder throw. Azaria Thomas, a true freshman in coverage for Florida State. Good coverage there by the true freshman. The ball placement, though, only where his receiver can make a play on the football. See Green doing a nice job adjusting to that ball, trying to sneak a foot in, unable to complete the process of the catch. You can make the point that he should have caught that. Good ball. Harbin looking downfield again, instead throws to the sideline. It's caught by Banks and wrestled out of play by Green. They get a little bit back, gain about seven, another third and long coming up as we hit the five-minute mark. Got to give a lot of credit to Kevin Higgins, the wide receiver coach for this Wake Forest football team. Tom, this wide receiver core from the route running to attacking the football, it's as good as you'll see on any given Saturday. It's as good as I've seen in college football this year with receivers coming back to the football. Just helps the quarterback so much. Look at the numbers on third down for Hartman. Five of five, two touchdowns, third down and 12. Hartman in trouble. This time he's sacked, and it's Jared Verse giving Florida State everything he's got. Limited reps today because of injury, but makes a much needed play, a loss of 10. But when Jared Verse is healthy, he's going to be one of the best defensive linemen in all of college football. Watch the inside move he makes on Nash. Then even pins the back of Mangan and ricochets back up into the quarterback. Huge sack to get this null defense off the field. Great to see him back on the field making an impact for this defense. 44-yard field goal try from Matthew Dennis. It's hugging the right upright, and it's no good. First miss of the season for Matthew Dennis. And it remains 21-7. We were told yesterday, and we knew it was a game-time decision on Jared Verse. Hadn't practiced really all week long. We did not know if he was going to play. Comes up with a crucial play here before halftime. And Mike Norvell, man, he loves it. The coach has told us if he plays because he hasn't practiced, we, we don't know what he's got. But we saw it on Ooh. that play. And they were telling you mentioned the LSU game, the blocked extra point that won the game was because of Jared Verse and something he had done earlier in the game that led to a blocked field goal. So it's on special teams, it's on defense. He means so much to Florida State. Ball is caught by Treshawn Ward. Out of bounds at the 33-yard line. A gain of seven on the play. Jordan Travis trying to get it going again. Hot start, but he's been quiet since that first possession. Does that stop 
spark this offense and give them some momentum heading into the half. Ward running left. One man to beat. Down the sideline, but he stepped out. He stepped out at the 49. Still a gain of 16. Nice job blocking off the left side. Dylan Gibbons gets out in front. Gets just enough for the linebacker. Hazen to help spring that nice run by Treshawn Ward. Excellent burst through the hole there for eight. Already 56 yards for Ward, who averages 88 yards rushing per game, fifth in the ACC. Plenty of time, three minutes to go. Two timeouts left for Florida State. Travis to throw from the pocket. Hitches and out almost intercepted. Gavin Holmes went up with one hand, tried to pick that off, but batted it to the ground. That ball sailed. Fortunate there for Jordan Travis. Thought he missed an opportunity over the middle. Look at Micah Pittman open. Kind of just stayed locked in on that receiver the entire time. Just a half field read, never took his eyes off his target. And fortunate that one wasn't picked off. High snap, run play, down to the 47 is Trey Benson for about four yards. So third down and six coming up for Florida State. Two and a half to go. So far on third down, Florida State yet to convert. 0 for 3 on the most crucial down and coming into this ball game. They've been excellent so far. Wildcat here with Trey Benson and at quarterback. Uh, check that. I'm sorry. It was Travis. First down throw to Benson, who is out there on the edge. To the 40-yard line, first down. Like to go empty there. Nice job catching that football by Trey Benson. Huge, crucial conversion on third down. Nearing two minutes to go. Travis from the pocket, pressure up the middle. Uh, Travis escapes, throws on the run, and it's a strike to Pittman inside the 25, down to the 22 for 18 more yards. Travis getting in a groove now, throwing the ball. Well, I love how when he breaks the pocket, watch his eyes. They stay downfield, and he's talking to Micah Pittman, conducting traffic, and he locates his target for a big first down. Allows him to go up tempo with this rhythm offensively. Officials waiting, though, for Wake Forest to sub. Run it off the right side. Benson doesn't get much. Davis there. On with Jones for Wake. Florida State can take its time here. 144 and counting and two timeouts. Really important here, Dusty, that they get some points on the board. Keep in mind, they deferred the kickoff, so Wake's going to get the ball coming out of the third quarter. Got Toa Philly in the backfield. Again, they like to throw it to him. Does have 27 carries on the season as well through four games. Here comes number 28. Jump cut in the hole and dragged down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line by Evan Slocum, a backup safety. And a timeout called here by Wake Forest because they want to get the ball back with some time on the clock and some timeouts. Let's go to Kevin while we have a moment in the studio. Hey, State Farm halftime report just minutes away. You were commenting about Wake Forest and the emotional swing, and now we're seeing Florida State respond. Yeah, it's amazing. The transfer of Jared Verse makes a stop, forces a missed field goal, and now a game of momentum happens. It's amazing how these young kids respond to momentum. Really important, as Dusty mentioned, that Florida State gets some points here with Wake getting the ball to start the second half. Absolutely. They need to score here, if only for confidence they need it. Highlights coming your way. A Top 10 team goes down, plus the very latest on Bryce Young and his shoulder. Back to you guys. That's really the news of the day for Young, given how Alabama has looked so dominant all season and today. Last check up 21 zip. So Kevin and Booger will have that for you at halftime. Minute 16 to go. Third down and six for Florida State with a little bit of momentum. Keep it on the ground with Toa Philly straight ahead. And a first down pickup to the 11-yard line. Gain of seven. Back to that counter. They're going to stick to it. Cameron McDonald, the tight end, comes across. Another good block. 75 to left guard, Dylan Gibbons. It's the identity of this offense. Toa Philly again. And met in the hole. 
able to keep the feet moving and pick up a couple. 58 seconds and counting, and Dave Clawson going to call another timeout. That'll leave Wake with one. 54 seconds on the clock. Wake Forest, their second at the half. And it will be 30 seconds. You think about set the, game the momentum that Wake Forest seconds. had, and then the missed field goal. And the play by verse on third down. Huge. And now Jordan Travis starts to look like he did on that opening possession. Trying to take all the momentum back heading into halftime. And you think about that drive. Wake's going to score, go up three scores before half. All of a sudden you get that big stop, force the missed field goal, and now you're in prime time position. And as we talked about earlier, it is imperative that you come away with points here before you go into half. Wake Forest give Sam Arvin and this crew a lot of credit though after last week the way they lost that game having to go on the road showing so much poise and leadership getting this team out to a 14 point lead trailed seven nothing just a couple minutes into the game. Again here on second down and nowhere to go. Ward taken down in the backfield. Kobe Turner makes another play and Wade calls its final timeout with 47 seconds to go. Third down and long coming up here for the Knowles. Kobe Turner has been a one-man wrecking crew in the middle of that Wake Forest defensive front. Just getting up the field, penetrating, causing all kinds of disruption. On that counter, it takes a little bit of time with pullers coming around. And like Kobe Turner, he's been great for them all season and really stepping up and having a huge first half for this defense. No, Dusty, you know it as a defensive tackle. The more upfield and disruptive you are, the more you make a back create. You know, backs have landmarks. We want to get from here to here. We want to take the ball. We want to have a good mesh. But when you blow that up, the entire offense becomes off schedule. No doubt, Tom. Well said. It completely blew that play up, made everything off schedule. Johnny Wilson down here, one on one in the boundary. Big catch radius. Travis on third down and long to the end zone and double coverage incomplete. He was trying to hit his tight end, Cameron McDonald. That was well defended by Mustafa. And fourth down, Florida State will have to bring on the field goal team. Bothroyd got some pressure that time for the Deacons. Jordan Travis taking a shot as he delivers the throw. That's a tight window throw. Unable to convert. Really kind of forced that ball in there to his tight end. Well done there on a big spot for Wake Forest defense. Surprised he didn't give Wilson a shot. I know. At that mismatch over there, Tom. Yeah. Put it up. Let him go. Use that link, that size. Go make a play. Yeah, no over-the-top safety either. Ryan Fitzgerald has struggled this year, and he missed again. He's now four for eight. His long is 30, and that one wasn't close from just 29 yards out. So it stays 21-7, and Wake Forest is out of timeouts, but 43 seconds left for Hartman and company. Well, it's played this team throughout the course of this season. Fitzgerald to the right. Mike Norvell got to be a bit disgusted with that. Need those points before the half, but on the flip side of things, Dave Clawson absolutely loves to stop from his defense. You got to give Brad Lambert, defensive coordinator, a ton of credit. First year here with Wake, did an excellent job with Purdue. He had been here for about 10 years previously, and the way Dave Clawson's got this program going, he got the phone call and said, absolutely. Easy call to come back, and he's doing a nice job here today with this defense. And they're just going to run it here. But great job by Christian Turner to keep the feet moving. Like he was going to get dragged down from behind at the point of attack by Leonard Warner. Still picked up four yards. We'll see if Wake runs another play here. And that gave the 50th play for Wake Forest in the first half. Wow. You want to start talking about as this game winds down. 21-7, the Seminoles. Got out to a 7-0 lead. Jordan Travis had three completions on that drive, had six the rest of the first half. Mike Norvell's potent offense struggled after that opening drive where they went right down the field in two minutes and scored. They're ranked for the first time since 2018 and 4-0 for the first time since 2015. And they're going to have to start the second half on defense. Fair catch, so it will come out 
to the 25. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, and Tom Luganville down on the field. Obviously, they're going to have to score, but they got to get a stop first. What adjustments have to be made defensively? Well, first and foremost, Florida State's going to have to do a better job stopping the run because Wake Forest's ability to run the football was too much. Justice Ellison was fantastic. 89 yards on the ground in that first half. A career high in just two quarters. They've got to make that adjustment. And Sam Hartman, man, was he fantastic running this offense, dropping dimes all over the field, especially this one to Donovan Green for six. Run play, Ellison. Again, keeps the feet moving. We saw him do that the entire first half. Moves the pile all the way out to the 34 for a nine-yard gain. Let's check him with Tom. Fellows, 50 plays in the first half for Wake Forest. Talking to Dave Kloss, and he says, we have to have at least 50 in the second half. We have to negate their speed and their athleticism by wearing them out. And for Mike Norvell in Florida State, it's about third down. And I don't mean just converting third downs, staying ahead of the chains and staying out of third and eight plus. Well, got to get to third down. They, they can't stop him on second and short. <laughs> Good point, too. Hartman on the run picks up the first down. That was one of the key factors in that first half. You know, third down, Wake Forest averaging about third and four, third and eight plus for Florida State. Hartman with time and another on-target throw to A.T. Perry. Stiff-arming down the sideline inside the 40. Tried to hurdle. Jamie Robinson, it was shoved out of bounds at the 37-yard line for 22 yards. Wait, A.T. Perry's got that great size, but you've got to be a better tackling team for Florida State. Excellent route coming back, working to the football. A couple of stiff arms as he hits the sidelines. Six catches already, 74 yards and a touchdown for Perry. 20 career touchdowns. Hartman waits forever and delivers another strike to Perry. And it looks like it's a first down for Wake Forest. Boy, Florida State just no answers defensively right now for what Wake is doing offensively. And no pressure there on Sam Hartman, as you mentioned, taking his time, riding that mesh, waiting until A.T. Perry comes open across the middle. Working the intermediate throws very well all afternoon. Wake Forest trying to get to four and one and hand Florida State its first loss of the season. Hartman checking it down to Ellison, makes the defender miss inside the 20, lowers the boom on another Noel downfield, and it's another first down. Keem Dent got the worst of that. He tried to bring down Ellison, gain of 10. It's man-to-man -man coverage, and that's Tatum Bethune. He's got to have Ellison out in the flats. He hesitated, waited, tried to see what Hartman was going to do. Hartman saw it, located his running back for an easy first down. Ellison up the middle, dives to the 13. A whiff by Jamie Robinson at the line of scrimmage. Kevin Knowles downfield made the stop, but that's four yards. Seeing these safeties really starting to come up, Tom. Jamie Robinson right there. They're trying to hold it at the snap and come up late and insert themselves in this run game. No doubt. I was just going to point out the same thing to you. They're trying to cheat late. Ellison waiting for the hole to open inside the five. Dies for the end zone. Touchdown, Wake Forest. 27 unanswered points by the Demon Deacons with a point after coming. Justice Ellison just having himself a career day. Excellent double team inside. They get good movement. And then it's Jaeger Bull, 83, coming back across. Key block there on Deloach. And it's just Ellison the rest of the way with that forward lean sneaking under Seminole defenders. Florida State here in Tallahassee. I'll give you a hint. It was the first and before today the only time that these two teams met as ranked teams. Any thoughts? Any guesses? 2006. It's actually close. And I could see why you'd say that, Tom, because Wake won the ACC that year. Right. But that is incorrect. 05. <laughs> Colder. Popped up. Loose ball. That's a live ball at the 15-yard line. And gathered in by Preston Daniel. Dangerous moment there almost for Florida State. All right, so let's go ahead and answer this. You said 05, Luke said 06. And the Aflac trivia question, the last time that 
Wake won here in Tallahassee. It was 2008. Wake was 18th. Florida State was 24th. That's the only other ranked matchup in this series. Wake Forest has only beaten Florida State eight times. Eight in the history of this series. Wow. 12-3. Like a, uh, a baseball score. It's 28-7 here today. Florida State crowd seems stunned. Wonder if the players are as well with what's transpired. And some running room up the middle for Treshawn Ward. That was a good tackle by Garns. Otherwise, Ward might still be running. Gain of six. Counter right up the middle. Nice blocking and quality run by Treshawn Ward. This is a massive drive for Florida State, Dave. No question. They've got to get something going. Got to get some momentum. The crowd not very lively here in the second half. And... Wake Forest has made that last drive look easy. This offense has got to spark this football team. Florida State missed a 44-yard field goal. A 29-yard field goal, excuse me, at the end of the first half. Over the middle, Pittman, who had the touchdown catch in the first quarter on the first drive. Takes defenders for a ride for 24 yards out to the 45. Nice job here by Jordan Travis. Little Reed going to bring that safety. Mustafa down. Middle of the field's open and a strike delivered to Micah Pittman. But we saw in the initial drive that first touchdown pass. Get that run game going. They can set up some play action, some zone read, and open up the middle of the field. Been hard for Travis to get some rhythm because they've had the ball for only 11 minutes. Hard running by Treshawn Ward. No gain, maybe a half yard. Towards the end of that second quarter, Travis started to get going, but the drive stalled and they had the missed field goal. They seem to be at their best where so they can start going up tempo. Allows Travis to get in a rhythm. Got to stay ahead of the chains, though. That's got to be the difference between the first and second half. And again, Tom, that first drive, they made it look so easy going right down the field in two minutes, but it's been tough sledding since second and nine. From the 46 of Florida State. They fake the pitch. Travis looking downfield to Pittman. Pulled in at the 30-yard line. 24 more yards. Pittman's been the spark. What's well, good protection. Put plenty of time for Jordan Travis to survey the field and find Micah Pittman coming open in the middle of the field. Nice route and quality hook up there to get this offense in action. And now they can go up tempo after the big play. Down to the 25-yard line is Trey Benson, upended by Garns. Five yards on the ground. Surprised we haven't seen Trey Benson, a bigger factor in this game, just haven't been able to get him going. Coming off his best game of the season against BC, the kick return, but also physical punishing runs their last time out a week ago. Yeah, had two offensive touchdowns along with their kick return you mentioned. First Florida State player ever to do that. Think of all the dynamic, talented players they've had that were returners at well that had offensive touchdowns, but nobody did what Benson accomplished last week. Benson, the ball carrier, just a one-yard gain to the 24. I know it's early third, but based on the score and the inability to stop Wake Forest are you, and the poor field goal kicking, are you in four-down territory? Absolutely. I mean, all those factors make it a no-brainer here for Mike Norvell in this Florida State offense. So that be interesting to see what they call here then on third down and four two for six on third down today to a Philly up top excellent pass catcher Travis instead looking the other way span right at the line to gain made the catch we'll see where they spot it do span has been quiet today they really like him Transfer from Illinois, former high school quarterback, still learning the receiver position, and he did not get enough to move the chains. It is fourth down and inches. He's got great size and speed, but that's what you'd like to see. They're moving the chains. Yeah, they're they're first. Yep, first down. I thought they at least would measure, because he looked, at least from one official, marked it short. They get up there and snap it quickly. Travis over the middle. Caught at the six. Malik McLean down to the five. It's first and goal. FSU. Again, a little play action pass right there. Garns the safety comes down. Opens up the middle for McLean. 
Nice hookup from Jordan Travis. Throwing the ball in rhythm with confidence on this drive, Tom. Yeah, and he loves the boundary dig route. He's thrown it so well, a foot in front of the numbers, just so accurate and in rhythm off the play action. Travis on first and goal, hands it off. No running room for Toa Feely. Hog tied and thrown down at the line of scrimmage. Second and goal for FSU. Smenda was in there to make the hit. Bothroyd has played an excellent game. Also there. Play 10 of this drive for Florida State coming up. Down here in this area before half. Came away with no points. Won't be acceptable here to start this second half. They've got a score. Find a way to punch it in. Wait, with nine in the box. Travis throwing end zone. Got a man. It's Pittman in the corner. Touchdown, Florida State. Huge score for the Seminoles. Second of the day for Pittman. Well, Michael Pittman working out of the slot. I just love the ball placement right here from Jordan Travis. Put it up high and outside. We're going to go for two here. You guys surprised here going for two? Yes. He must really not trust his kicker at this point. That must be it. Play fake. Travis waiting. Now on the move. Pointing. Throwing. And it's intercepted in the end zone. Picked off by Galvin Holmes, so it remains 28-13. That has to be the reason, because of the missed 29-yard field goal. He must not trust Ryan Fitzgerald at all to go for two there. Well, Florida State needed a spark, and that's exactly what they're able to get. Jordan Travis finds Micah Pittman for the second time. Knowles on the... Also on ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio. Playoffs next Saturday on ESPN. They passed Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganbill. 28-13, missed extra point as they tried to go for two, didn't convert. Now a touchback. Wake will start on the 25. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown. Really good play design here from Mike Norvell. He's going to be able to locate from the slot. Micah Pittman just going on a corner route. Second touchdown of the day. That's Malik Mustafa. Really good cover guy. Excellent route. Pushes it all the way to the stem before he cuts out. So big mistake by Wyatt Rector of Florida State on the kicking team commits a 15-yard penalty that allows Wake to start on its 40-yard line now. Mike Norvell livid with the officials right now, too. Finally get something good happen, and then right. you give this offense, it's been so difficult to stop, prime field position. The energy of Mike Norvell, I think it really jumps off the page, right, guys? At practice yesterday, oh, just yeah. bouncing around, running all over the place. As you see, Rector gets called for this. Just unnecessary. Wake Forest comes back and runs the ball, and great patience by Christian Turner. Florida State took seven guys making contact with him before he finally went down. It's a gain of four or five. Patrick Payton eventually on the stop. You're mentioning Mike Norvell, and that's his signature, right? The intensity of practice. He's constantly going, constantly talking. It's in year three, after four seasons at Memphis, was an assistant at Arizona State. In trouble, Hunt and a sack. They finally get to him. Derek McClendon on the takedown. Patrick Payton was back there as well for FSU. It's a loss of 12. We talked about Patrick Payton early on in this football game. He's going to work inside, and he's going to be able to get home. Had to have it. You really need it. Nice job with the long arm inside. Comes off the block. And a big sack between him and McClendon. Setting up third and super long for this offense. But Wake was able to convert on third and long the entire first half. This a little bit taller test. 
In trouble again. Hartman sacked again. Back inside the 25-yard line. Joshua Farmer. Fourth and long. Wow, this Seminole football team has come alive, especially the defensive line. Watch the game inside. Farmer is going to be inside. He's going to run a stunt and loop outside. Really well set up. That's an ET stunt. The end first, the tackle loops around, and he gets home, and he gets Sam Hartman on the ground. Crucial third down stop for this Seminole defense. We talked a lot about how dangerous Micah Pittman is with the ball in his hands. He's going to get a chance at a return here. We'll see. Moore tries to kick it away from him. A lot of hang time. Pittman is under it. At the 35, at the 40, there he goes. Flag is down. Pittman hurdles the defender. Right on cue with a great return, but it might come back. Penalty marker down at the 33-yard line. We were just telling you how dangerous Pittman can be. That penalty likely on Florida State, which would negate about a 40-yard return. Team the team the wow, it's on the kicking team. And, and it, you did see Pitt, Pittman got tripped up. And so they call kick-catch interference, which adds yardage to an already great return. You know what's fascinating here? What a return here by Micah Pittman. He's really been... The bright spot for the Seminole offense and here on special teams as well. Good job getting out in front. How about the hurdle, though? Getting over the defender. And how about it's been a different receiver really every game for Florida State, right? It was Pokey Wilson against LSU. It was Johnny Wilson against Louisville. It was Darian Williamson a week ago against BC. And Mike Norvell told us, I think Micah Pittman's going to have a chance to have a big game. And he's doing just that here this afternoon. They've got it on the 33-yard line, but now a penalty on Florida Sorry. State. Offense number 76. That's on Darius. Penalty. It's still first down. Darius Washington, who has been starting at left tackle the last couple weeks for the injured Robert Scott Jr. Yeah, he struggled a little bit today, especially early. Getting a little antsy there. So back about five yards, first and 15 on the 38. And at this point, you have to assume the kick field goals are not an option because if Mike Norvell is not going to kick an extra point after you get a touchdown this early in the game, this early in the second half, going for two when you have a chance to just kick it and get within 14, you have to think everything's four down territory. Breaking a tackle initially is Ward and then slowed down enough to get him to the ground at the 35-yard line. So a gain of three or four there. Second down and long coming up. Inside five minutes to go in the third. Florida State trailing by 15. The Knolls go to Raleigh next week. Play NC State. And then they got Clemson here in Tallahassee in two weeks. They still have to play at Syracuse. And then the rivalry game with Florida on a Friday night, day after Thanksgiving. Second down at 12 on the 35 of Wake. Travis throwing. Pulled in inside the 30 by Ontario Wilson. His first catch to the 29. Third down and six now. Third and a little bit more manageable. Situation that early on in the game really struggled. Micah Pittman's been the go-to guy to the field in the slot. It's really manageable now that you got two downs to get it. Right, don't rule out the run here. Correct. Third down at six. See Travis's numbers throwing on third down. And he will spin it here and just dump it off to the back. Nice move. War first down and out of bounds. But after he moved the chains, Treshawn Ward, who has a pair of 100 yard games this season on the ground. You see the skill once he gets the football. Oh, man, he's so elusive. And he set up Jones inside. Knew he wanted to spin back outside to some open grass. Excellent job after the catch. Pretty well defended there initially by Wake Forest. But Treshawn Ward doing a great job out in space. Former walk-on. Plant City, Florida, redshirt sophomore. Travis rolling to his left, steps up, now throws, and Wilson is there inside the 15-yard line. Inside the 10, breaking tackles, and finally taken down. There are two penalty markers down, however, back at the 27-7. 
this play is coming back. Unfortunate, because it's a great decision by Jordan Travis. They're going to get 76 once again. Darius Washington, get that left hand out. Working on Bothroyd. What a great play design, too, Dusty. Yeah. You have the kind of the wide side triple option with the flare route to Wilson. But man, Washington has just had a just had a tough day today. He had that hand too far outside, right, Tom? Yep. Outside the framework of the body. And sure. as you saw Bothroyd put his arms up, draws the flag pretty easily. They motion to Ophelia out of the backfield. They do like to throw it to him downfield. Travis is looking that way and going for him and just over his head. So Ophelia could not catch up to it on that shot to the end zone. That's the matchup they wanted. Toa Feely, excellent speed and the ability to catch the football. Matched up on a linebacker in Chase Jones. He has the step, that ball just a hair thrown too far. We heard Mike Norvell tell us, you know, kind of reminds him a little bit of Tony Pollard, who we had back at Memphis, now at the Dallas Cowboys. That versatility can do a little bit of everything. And Jordan Travis just slightly missed his running back. Lined up out wide. His first incompletion of the quarter. So it's second down and 20. Travis keeping it and gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a one yard gain. Kendron Wayman on the tackle. Now you're in third down and 19. And to have any chance to go for it on fourth down, you got to figure you got to get 12 to 15 yards here. They have no confidence in their kicker, Ryan Fitzgerald, who's four for eight on the season and missed the 29-yarder in the first half. At the very least, cut this thing in half, right? Set up at least third and manageable. You know you're working with two downs, as you just referenced. No reason to take a deep shot if nothing's available down the field. 28-13, again, they went for two instead of kicking the extra point on the last touchdown. Travis in trouble. the 38-yard line. The ruling on the field is that the runner's forward progress was stopped. Fourth down. Jasheen Davis has been all over the place for Wake defensively. He really has. Against the run, via the pass, he's really done a nice job all throughout this ball game. And again, working over there on Darius Washington. Good job with his hands pressing that pocket. They blow this dead. I don't know on this one. I don't either. I think that ball was out. It was recovered by Kobe Turner of Wake Forest. But forward progress was right. ruled. Stop. So the play's over. Correct. No replay situation. Now, what do you do? Do you punt it? Absolutely. I think you have, you have to punt to. it. No question. Try to pin him back. If you take a delay a game here, back your punter up and try to pin Wake Forest back inside the 10. Try and make him earn it. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. It's still fourth down. And if you're Florida State, if you're Mike Norvell, you got to be frustrated because you get the return, you get the kick catch interference call, and you can't, you go backwards basically. The ball right now is five yards, seven yards past where it was when he started the drive. His penalties, right? And you get the big play inside the 10, but it comes back with the holding penalty from your left tackle. And Darius Washington as another flag is down with a rough series. That ball checks up and is down around the eight yard line. Let's see what the penalty is about. Mastromano, the punter, did his job. The officials are talking with Dave Clausen. It's easy to believe the penalty is on Illegal formation. Florida State. Kicking team. That five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. Yeah, they have the option to make a punt against State. We have another battle of ranked teams in the ACC coming up tonight. Saturday night football presented by Capital One. Tenth-ranked NC State at number five, Clemson, 7.30 Eastern, about an hour and a half from now. So Florida State has seven penalties. Three came on that last drive, a possession that began inside the 40-yard line 
of Wake Forest. The Seminoles went backwards. They got negative 10 yards on that possession that took over four minutes off the clock, had to punt it, had a penalty on the punt, and Wake Forest starts on the 13, goes with the run. Ellison is stood up by Jari and Jones. Lundy there as well, so no game. Yeah, that kind of feels like the most taxing part of it, right, Dave? The fact that 420 off the clock and it's completely empty. It just seemed like so much momentum with Florida State after the touchdown drive. You get the big stop on defense, the big punt return, and it nets. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Arby's. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville. You see Mike Norvell talking to his team. On the Florida State sideline, trying to see if they can respond here in the fourth quarter. First things first, getting a stop. They did get one in that third, something they couldn't do in the first half. Hartman to the air, and a sliding catch made by A.T. Perry. They'll mark him down at the 19. It's a six-yard gain, brings up third down and four. In the opening moments here of the fourth quarter. Hartman with two touchdown passes on the day. He's had another brilliant performance. Third and four. This is where they were so good in the first half. Seven for 11. The ability to move the chains. Look at those numbers on third down. Perfect for Hartman. Third and four. Pressure in a space. Got it away. And it's a strike for a first down of the 26 to Jaeger Bull. That's what we're talking about there. Hanging in there. Taking a hit. The poise. And then the throw on the money. I mean, absolutely fantastic by Sam Hartman. Stands in there. Say... Fourth string tied in and Trey Bowl barely open. Sam Hartman finds him and converts on third down. Hartman flattened at the 25 yard line, a one yard loss. Jared Verse, who was frustrated that he could not get Hartman to the ground on the last play, did tackle him there. Great to see him back out there. Big sack there in the first half. Key stop. It'd be crucial here in the fourth quarter. On second and 11, Ellison, nowhere to go. There's Burse again. Also, DJ Lundy, who's played a nice game. It goes for no yards, third down and 11. And we see Jamie Robinson come up from the safety position. And unfortunately, Jared Burse makes a big play down on the field for the Seminoles. The injury that he had been dealing with was a knee. Back in a moment, third and 11. Seems to be all right. Running to the sideline, trying to get the defense and the crowd fired up. The problem is he's not out there for this third down and 11, a critical play for the defense for FSU. Harpin has been flawless on third down today. I cheat a safety over the top of A.T. Perry up top. You got a true freshman. It's already eight Thomas working on him. off the field two minutes into the fourth quarter down 15. Well it's excellent coverage down the field by Florida State they left those two high safeties and Sam Hartman could not find anybody open and it's Kalen Deloach one of the leaders of this defense on a delayed blitz comes clean and gets Hartman to the ground for a huge Seminole stop. Dusty, I think that Sam Hartman thought one of those safeties was going to trigger down like they have most of this game, and that would give him what side of the field to go to. When it didn't happen, pressure burst the pipe. Let's see if Moore kicks it to Pittman. The last punt return was about 40 yards. Good hang time on this one. Signals for the fair catch, and he's got it at the 42-yard line. 41-yard punt. No return, 12-24 to go. Florida State with possession, down 15. Completed seven of his last eight passes for 86 yards and a touchdown. Crucial drive right here is back-to-back -back drive. Seminole defense getting big stops and giving their offense an opportunity. Travis had a career high passing 321 yards last week. Another flag. That's eight now against Florida State. Ball start. Offense number 71. Five-yard penalty. 
it's still first down. These are the kind of mistakes that Florida State's been making the last few years. One of the reasons why they've been a bad team the last few years. We hadn't seen that this year to this point, but big penalties on the last drive and now off schedule to start this one. Been one of the big improvements, taking better care of the football. We've seen turnover here today and then cleaning up the penalties, which again, plague the last drive and put yourself behind the chains to start this. On first and 15, play action, setting up the screen, and it's dropped. And Toa Feely had some blockers out there, but he put it on the ground. Second and 15. Boy, they had that so well set up. Lineman out in front, just a drop by Toa Feely. It's one of the sloppiest games. I mean, Florida State comes into this thing 4-0, but they've been playing, to your point, Dave, clean football. This is all self-inflicted wounds here. And they're finally ranked, Tom, first time in almost 1,500 days, going back to preseason of 2018. A lot of talk about the resurgence of the program. Not saying that goes away if they lose to a good Wake team, but it will certainly cool down all the discussion about the Knowles being back as national contenders. Travis going downfield, single coverage, incomplete. Johnny Wilson, who since that opening drive we haven't really heard from, he tried him deep, and Gavin Holmes committed pass interference. Yeah, late Gavin Holmes going to get his hands on the back of Johnny Wilson, going to draw that flag. Would have been tough for Wilson to be able to come down. Defense number seven, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Really no need to make that contact. I don't think Johnny Wilson is going to be able to make that play. Gavin Holmes, one-on-one -on -one outside. We have not seen Johnny Wilson be a feature target. Clearly, the contact and the grab with the ball in the air. They run it. Treshawn Ward to the 42. That's a good pickup of about six. A little surprised they haven't gone to Johnny Wilson more yeah. since that first drive. He's got such an advantage in terms of his size against those corners. And that was a poorly thrown ball. That's actually what led to the pass interference. On second and four, Travis. Downfield. Oh, great grab down the seam by Cameron McDonald. Inside the 20 to the 14-yard line. It's a gain of 28. A lot of trust right there from Jordan Travis to his tight end, Cameron McDonald. Excellent adjustment to that football in the air and strong hands to bring it in. Can they pay off? this drive they couldn't on the last possession when they got in plus territory they're a little bit deeper on this drive inside the 15. Ward to the 10 and finally bottled up at the eight but that's a six yard pickup Isaiah Wingfield in there first approaching 11 minutes to go here in the fourth Ward's got such good vision and you see him lower the shoulder Finish that runoff with some physicality, pushing forward for a couple extra yards. Will be interesting if they score. Are they going for two again? Got to get it to one possession game. Do they trust their place kicker? Second and three. Travis on the option, keeps inside the five, and thrown out of bounds at about the three-yard line by A.J. Williams. It is a first down, first and goal for the Knowles. Span comes in ghost motion. Typically thought he might have been there as a pitch man. Not good pitch relation, and Travis just keeps it himself. A nice job picking up the first down. We talked about penalties being something we had not seen this year. One thing we have from Florida State, resilience against LSU. Yes. Uh, at Louisville, and we're seeing it here again, they're still fighting. It's the belief that Mike Norvell talked about is instilled in this team and in this program. Travis, quarterback draw, Wake Forest not fooled, and he gets tagged at the five-yard line. Big hit by Dylan Hazen. Nice job sifting through those blockers by Hazen. And a big-time hit delivered on the quarterback. Very well done by Hazen stepping in here today. Making a nice play. So a lo loss of one, second and goal. There's Johnny Wilson up top, one-on-one. -on -one. Fade to Wilson, and just makes the catch for the touchdown. That was no contest. He had an eight-inch height advantage over J.J. Roberts. Called for that matchup early.
earlier when they were in a similar position before halftime. They didn't go to him there. They do go to him this time around. At 6'7", he is such an imposing force. And a really nice job coming back to and fighting for that football. Here's what's interesting, because they're going to go for two, because obviously they do not trust the place kicker. But if you miss it, you got to keep an eye on the clock. 9.32 to go. You don't get this here. It's a two-possession game. Chance to get within seven. Travis on the rollout, looking for the throwback, and it's there. It's caught for two points by Marquise and Douglas. Direction, roll Jordan Travis across and throw it back. All of a sudden, Florida State back in action and in this ball game. When you got a guy 6'7, 235, let him go up and make a play. And savvy play calling right here. And Jordan Travis pays it off and gets Florida State back in this ball game. 21, Florida State has started back from down 21 points to get within seven. Touchback. Wake will start at the 25. We'll see if Sam Hartman can answer. But first, Kevin Agandi in the studio. Dave, time now for ATT 5G studio up. They got something brewing in Fayetteville. 28 0 Alabama. But here come the Hogs. Some struggles with the special teams there for Alabama on the bad snap on a punt, which led to a touchdown there. 23 unanswered points. Love that play call. Pound it up the middle. Use your physicality against Alabama. No Bryce Young. So Jalen Miller, he, he's been struggling throwing the ball. You got to stop the run. And here's the one thing I don't understand. This is the only person you have to stop right now with Bryce Young out of the game, and the Hawks couldn't do it. Big run would lead to a touchdown score, which just happened. So it's 35-23, Bama. Back to you, Dave. And Wake Forest tries to run it on first down. Christian Turner pushed back by Bethune and Farmer. So a short gain, pickup of one. And in these situations, over the course of Sam Hartman's career, this is where he has thrived. It's an area that he's grown in in terms of his leadership. He's made so many great plays today. Had six touchdowns in defeat last week. We'll see what he does here on second and long. Looking downfield and throws another dart out to the 40-yard line to Keyshawn Williams for a gain of 14. With excellent pressure right there for Sam Hartman. I mean, everybody was covered. Able to buy a little bit of time as Williams just comes open and a strike fired by Sam Hartman. Hartman a seven for his last seven. Gonna give it here though. Christian Turner and again Bethune is there. The UCF transfer makes the hit. Fascinating. He's just sitting there waiting right behind his defensive line. And as soon as that ball is given and declared, right there to make a nice stop. Gate of three, second and seven. Clock at 8.25 and counting. Another run. Tripped up by Payton. Bethune took down Turner, but Peyton was in there first. Gain of one, third down at six now for Wake. A nice job, Patrick Payton coming off that block. Crucial tackle. Big third down here once again. And Jared Verse is on the field for Florida State. He's right over the ball. Hartman with time. Long throw. Oh, what a catch at the 45 by Keyshawn Williams. He jumped over. convert and make that catch by Keyshawn Williams thought that ball was going to be intercepted and instead a huge crucial first down greedy Vance was in position to pick it off but couldn't Hartman now throwing it deep overthrows the receiver this time going for Keyshawn Williams again there's an injured offensive lineman for Wake Forest it's Javionte Nash who missed last year with an injury He's back and has been playing well at left tackle, but he's shaking up here. Midway point of the fourth quarter, seven-point game. 
Dusty Dvorak, Tom Lugan, Bill, here in Tallahassee, undefeated Florida State, ranked for the first time in four years, on the ropes, down seven, Wake ball, second and ten, Hartman on the roll up, looking to the sideline, incomplete. He was going for Keyshawn Williams, who he's targeted several times on this drive. Go back and look at this last third down. Greedy Vance is in perfect position. The only mistake Hartman's made all day. This should have been picked, and instead, he got mossed by Keyshawn Williams. I still don't know how that ball goes through Greedy Vance's hands. So far today, Hartman 7-7 seven seven on third down with six first down tosses. Big one right here. And they're going to run it. Florida State maybe didn't expect that. And it's a gain of about seven. We'll see if they go for it here. Bernardo Green on the tackle of Christian Turner. Is this the right call here by Dave Clawson with 6.55 to go? Well, he's already missed a field goal earlier, the first one of the season. Dave Clawson rolling the dice. I actually, I like the call. He trusts his quarterback to make the right decision here. Hartman to the air. For it down, wide open receiver. Caught at the 32 for a first down again. It's Keyshawn Williams. There's been a connection between those two here on this drive. Six and a half to go and counting with a fresh set of downs. They're in a bunch stack, and it was an excellent route by Keyshawn Williams. Faked like he was going outside, foot in the ground, turns in, ball on him right now. And again, the trust in Hartman to make the right play. And run it here. Turner met at the 30 and dropped. Boy, the defense, Dent, Bethune. We're seeing Florida State's defense flying to the football. Again, I know it sounds like we've said this several times about other aspects of Florida State, but it's another thing that we had not seen in the last few years that we're seeing here today. And we didn't see it in the first half, right? Wake Forest ran the football at will on them. Completely different story here in this second half. They've done a much better job negating this rushing attack and really allowing nowhere for these running backs to go. Now Sam Hartman taking his time, taking some of that time off the clock. On second and eight. Some room off the right side and a broken tackle by Turner to get the first down. Patrick Payton could not make the stop. There's an injured Seminole at the 25. For an injury. And it's Peyton who missed the tackle on Christian Turner that's shaken up. Well, just a massive run here by Christian Turner off the right side. Fighting through arm tackles. Moving the chains, putting them in field goal position. Huge run right there to convert on second down. And now a quick word from Cheez-It. Man, I make this cheesiest chain look good. I'm still feeling the cheesiest. You are a wheel of cheese. Cheese, feeling the cheesiest. So that was a big first down by Wake Forest because now they're in field goal range. Matthew Dennis missed a 44-yarder earlier in the game, but that's his first miss of the season. There is far greater trust from the Wake Forest staff in its kicker compared to Florida State, who won't even let its kicker kick extra points. And we have gotten confirmation, Tom, down there. There's not an injury yep. to the kicker. It's a choice by Mike Norvell. Yeah, and I think it's it's a bit of analytics combined with a bit of, you know, gut feeling from Mike Norvell, but clearly he's not comfortable with his kicker's accuracy right now. Well, what matters most is Florida State's defense right now. Can it somehow get to Hartman? they got to keep him out of the end zone. Can they hold him to three? Is there enough time for two possessions? Five and a half left. Florida State does have all of its timeouts. This is play 12 of a four-minute drive by Wake Forest. Feels like you're going to continue to get a dose of Christian Turner. If you rock him down. Florida State stack in the box. Turner gets drilled but breaks a tackle and ends up getting back to where the initial hit took place right around the line of scrimmage. He had Bethune there first. They're going to count it as a one-yard loss. Leonard Warner cleaned him up. Second down and 11 inside. Five minutes to go. Dusty, I know they're trying to milk this thing, and I get that, but it's a little surprising to me given that Wake is so into counting numbers that when they see Akeem Dent, 27, walking down, they're still handing it off into an outnumbered box. 
I think they feel if they can just get a field goal out of this drive, Tom. Yeah. That's all that they need. Can you see eight in there, maybe even nine. Turner breaking it to the outside, slipping a tackle, and finally pushed out at the 11-yard line by Dent. It's a gain of six, third and five now for Wake Forest. Well, it's a really good job by Christian Turner, pressing it inside, and you'll see off the edge, Lundy come in and allow Turner to get back outside. Big mistake there by Lundy. Jared Burst just checked in for Florida State. Again, playing through an injury. Can he come up with a big play here? That's if Wake Forest decides to throw it. You'd have to think they're going to run it here, but Hartman is perfect on third down through the air. At bunch, you got A.T. Perry and Williams. They will just hand it off inside the 10, inside the 5 is Turner, down to the 4, first and goal. Great work up front. That Wake Forest offensive line moving bodies to put them in first and goal. That's a veteran group, 197 starts amongst that veteran offensive line and an excellent block by a backup tight end in Jaeger Bull. So again, the rushing attack of Wake Forest, for the most part, the year has not, has not been good. They barely had 20 hearts against Liberty, ended up winning that game by one. Then you had the thrilling game last week. It was all Hartman, six touchdown passes. They lose that game. And then in the third quarter, after a good first half rushing, they couldn't do it. But now in the fourth quarter, they really got it going on the ground. Here. Well, this drive, so crucial. And it was obviously Sam Hartman converting on a couple of big third down passes. But man, the running attack has been stellar here to really ice this game game away and put Wake Forest in position with another score makes it very difficult for Florida State to be able to come back. Look, the SEC West year in, year out is the best division in college football, yeah. but I mean, look at the Atlantic, the Atlantic right now. really good. You got four teams yeah. unbeaten. One of them may go down here in Florida State. You've got NC State Clemson tonight on ABC. First and goal. It's going to be Turner. And his forward progress stopped at the two before he's dumped by Robinson. And now Florida State use a timeout here. Try to give themselves as much time as they possibly can. Different ways of thinking. Some people might say, let them score. Right. I don't adhere to that. And. Go back to the game against LSU. It's a similar situation, and it wound up Florida State turned the ball over and opened the door for LSU to get that touchdown, and obviously the block extra point resulted in a win for Florida State, but it looks like Florida State's going to elect to try to get a stop, have their defense bow their neck, Tom. Well, what's amazing is Wake Forest is doing this, and they're entirely outnumbered. I mean, credit this offensive line for Wake Forest. We're playing with a backup left tackle right now. Florida State knows what's coming, is adding multiple hats to the box, and Wake is still pushing the pile. They've done an outstanding job all day long. I do think Nash has returned into the game on the left side, but your point is 100% accurate. Yeah, this Spencer. Offense, this Clap came in for, has been great. Clap came in for a couple plays, but yeah. Nash back out there. And you got 3.51 on the clock. Just one timeout left for Florida State. Second and goal here for Wake. You would imagine uh, they could keep running the ball here or any pass is going to go to the end zone. I don't it, I would it would surprise me if they put the ball in the air at this point. Absolutely. Especially since they're moving it. Absolutely. Ellison in the first half. Turner. On this final drive. I understand what you guys are saying, but if you throw the ball in the end zone, you get a touchdown, the game's over. No matter how much time's left. We'll see, second and goal. And right now, both Clapp and Nash are in the game. They've got an extra offensive lineman in there, and they got Bull in the backfield. Along with Christian Turner. So you got the six offensive linemen, you got the tight end of the backfield. Not sure what the discussion is here amongst the officials.
his play is under further review. So they're going to review the last play, but we need to see the last play to understand why they're reviewing it. Now he didn't say reviewing for targeting, but I'm not sure if that's something they're looking at. They're trying to make sure they got the right down. I mean, that was first and goal. You wouldn't think that they'd be confused about what down it is. I don't think the ball came out. I don't think there was. And we're being told they're trying to confirm what down it is, but again, that seems pretty simple. It was just first and goal. They had moved the chains and then ran a play. Second down and goal. You're good with math, Dave. Shockingly. Cuse education finally paid off. This gives Florida, I mean, Florida State's defense been on the field a lot here in this drive. Gives them a chance, a little bit of rest. Give them your best here coming off the ball here. Play 16 of a drive that has taken up almost six minutes. Dave, to your point, if they were to get a little sneaky here, maybe try to pop one into the end zone, keep an eye on number nine. That's the go-to guy, and he's got the height advantage. A.T. Perry. 15 touchdowns a season ago, one of the premier wide receivers in all of college football, and he's been a seminal killer for the last couple of seasons. He's got eight catches for 91 yards and a touchdown today, and last year was seven for 155 and a touchdown. Man, this is just, unless there's something else we're not being told exactly if there's confusion over the down. Again, it seemed pretty simple. They got first down and gold. They took the chains away. Then they ran a play. And then this happened where they're trying to figure out second down. And, and we do have some communication with the replay booth. And that's all that we're being told right now. Not sure what other reason there would be for this type of delay. which is another reason they just need to get uniform with the NFL and just go to the challenges. You can still have replay, look at you know, all scoring plays and turnovers, but again, on a simple play, I guess it's different. You're looking at the down, but still, it shouldn't take this long. No, it should not. Very confused. I think Dave Clausen's confused. I After know further review, it's second and goal. How did we figure that out? But again, Florida State gets a chance, yep. the defensive lineman in particular, chance to breathe. Second and goal. Get off that football, create some penetration. And... Again, you got the six offensive linemen in there, along with the tight end lined up in the backfield. Here's Turner, driven to the ground at the two by Robinson. Now it's third and goal. Just one timeout left for Florida State. Third and final timeout. Florida State. Will be 30 seconds. Give Wake Forest a ton of credit after losing the way they did last week, leading in the fourth quarter. 38-35, leaving a uh, leading in overtime 45-38, only to lose in double overtime after a historic day by Sam Hartman, tying a conference record with six touchdown passes, did not throw an interception to be able to come on the road. Again, uncertain early in the week yep. whether this game would even be played. And then because of the storm and potential turbulence and the plane being unable to fly through the storm, they weren't even sure Thursday night. They had to move their flight up from yesterday afternoon to yesterday morning just to make sure they got here. Dave Clawson had no doubt in his mind that his team would respond and be able to move forward from that loss at Clemson. They put themselves in a prime position to win this ballgame. Third and goal from the two. Wake trying to go up two scores. Here's Turner in trouble in the backfield and down he goes at the five yard line. And there is Jared Verse. It's fourth down. It would be about a 22 or 23 yard field goal from here. The offense is still on the field for now, but man, it would be shocking if they didn't kick it, right? They, they're going to kick this field goal. And maybe just take the clock down here, call timeout, because you don't see the kicker 
anywhere near the field of play. Got to imagine that's what Dave Clawson is doing. Now he stands next to an official. Just going to take the clock down here to three minutes, call the timeout, and then you would assume bring on the field goal team. It's still fourth down. So they actually took the delay a game. Better angle. When you're at that angle, five Correct. yards probably better, right? That's what I was thinking. I think that they wanted to back him up, give him a little bit better of an angle. Worth pointing out, backup deep snapper, Will Cobb, in the game. Okay, and he's done a great job in all his snaps so far, all throughout the course of the day. Right there, Weddington High School in North Carolina. Key snap and hold before this kick. Dennis missed from 44, otherwise he's perfect on the season. This is a 27-yarder to push the lead to 10. They do have two blocks, Florida State, but not that time. The kick is good, and the lead is 10. Great operation starting with the snap from Will Cobb. The hold and the kick from Dennis, 31-21. And Florida State out of timeouts. Remember, the two block kicks that helped them win the LSU game, but they didn't get a chance because the operation was so good there from Wake. 6.37 off that clock. Dave Plosson lights it. How about the job Dave Plosson has done at Wake Forest? That was an 18-play drive. Crucial field goal they're able to convert on. You take 6.37 off the clock. Think about that third down where Creedy Vance was in perfect position, but Keyshawn Williams finds a way to come up with it. They convert on another fourth down to Keyshawn Williams. He was the go-to guy on that drive, and then it was at the line of scrimmage, getting movement, running the football with Christian Turner to make it a two-score lead. They went three and nine each of his first two years at Wake Forest. Six straight bowl games since. Incredible. The division championship a year ago, and they're not out of the race, even though they have a Clemson loss. You know, handing Wake Forest a loss here, knowing the games that are coming up. Florida State has to go to NC State. Syracuse is in the mix in the Atlantic. It's going to come down to the end of the season as to who wins that division. Fair catch made of the 20 by Rector. It's really only a five-yard difference. A little surprised that he didn't trust. He's a tight end. I mean, why not try to run with the ball there? It's only a five-yard difference. You catch it at the 20. You get the ball to 25. Want to try to run. Take a look at today's player spotlight brought to you by Champion. Sam Hartman had a great career and another outstanding performance here today. He's been fantastic all season long. And today, when they had to have it the most, third down situations, a crucial fourth down, he has been straight money. The ball placement and the way he's able to run this offense absolutely off the charts. And now Florida State down 10 points after the Dennis field goal. No timeouts left, 2.55 on the clock. Travis to the sideline, nice catch by Wilson and out of bounds at the 39, 14 yards and the clock stops at 2.50 to go. Strong hands, how about the catch radius? There's Wilson, excellent job to go up and get that, pluck it out of the air and bring it in before he steps out. Here's the interesting thing as you look at the clock, as Travis looks to throw here on second down. Again, he finds Wilson out of bounds. Think about it, you have no faith in your kicker. I mean, you're in a situation here where you need to score, so you still could kick the field goal. You gotta get an onside kick regardless, Absolutely. but the field goal is not even an option because they wouldn't let the kicker even try extra points. Changes your thought process as a head coach and trying to manage this situation, no question. No timeouts. Gotta already go faster, the, gotta go. Yep, already at the 46 yard line, but clock is ticking. Travis forced out of the pocket and dumps it off to the 42-yard line for McDonald. 2.25 to go. Gain of only a couple of them. Boy, they sure took a lot of time off that clock before they snapped that football. You got to be in hyper mode right now, right? You want to get the right play call, but man, the clock is ticking away. Travis looking deep. He's going for Wilson. And ball thrown out of bounds. There was a little contact downfield from Wingfield. Crowd didn't like the call. No flag, though. Third down. 
Isaiah Wingfield working on the bigger Johnny Wilson. See if he definitely some arm fighting there between the two of those guys. I've seen less called for that in college football. Both guys seem like they were kind of jockeying for arm position, though. When you see that arm bar, though, they usually call that yeah. one. 2-12 left, third down and seven. Travis in trouble, just gets rid of it and completes it close to the line to gain to Douglas. It's going to be just short, though, fourth down. Mustafa had some pressure that time on Travis. 2.07 left. Needing a touchdown, then have to recover the onside kick. And you would imagine, again, have to score a touchdown again since they don't believe in their kicker. And they're going to run the ball here on fourth down and get the first down with Ward. Clock will stop to reset the chains. They're going to try to get up to the line of scrimmage with 150 to go. Run behind that bunch set over there and an extra tight end behind Douglas. A piece of running to convert on a crucial fourth down. Clock starts now. Travis to throw. Moving to his left. And in the traffic, incomplete. Trying to float it downfield to Portier. 140 to go. It's a nice job by Jordan Travis to throw that away from the defender. Offense number 85. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. They didn't see the flag. So an, el an eligible man downfield on the tight end, Douglas. So first and 15 with a minute 40 to go. Back at the 32-yard line. Charge timeout. Wake Forest. First of the half. It will be 30 seconds. Okay, so Wake takes the timeout. Two remaining. They're coming off. That incredible game against Clemson with the six touchdown passes. The number's not as gaudy, but Hartman just as good. Tough, gritty, stands in there. Did an excellent job all throughout the course of the day, being able to find the open man, trusting his wide receivers in so many different situations. This one an absolute seed. An excellent grab by Green on the touchdown. He's an impressive young man. I mean, we talk about some of the better quarterbacks in the ACC and all college football. Sam Hartman, got to be a name that comes very early on in that conversation. Minute 40 remaining. No timeouts for Florida State, down 10 points. Travis, long throw, it's caught. Wilson got to get out of bounds, and he does at the 22. So the clock stops with 135 remaining. Toa Philly in the backfield with Travis to the air. Travis again moving to his right. Flag is down. Ball is caught and out of bounds to a Philly. But this will come back. I think they're going to get a hold on the interior of that offensive line, Dave. Holding. Offense number 79. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. you got to imagine that's going to be one of the first things when Mike Norvell goes back and looks at this football game. The self-inflicted penalties. That's the 10th. And on turn time, as we saw Bothroy try to spin out of that block, turn time had the jersey and drew the flag. So it's second down and 15 with a minute 29 to go. Travis on the move again. Got to get rid of it and just gets it past the line of scrimmage, throwing it out of play. So 124 to go. Third down and long. Really well defensed in the secondary by Wake Forest. Nowhere for Jordan Travis to go with the football. Been a good effort here today from Brad Lambert's bunch. I mean, they struggled against Liberty, struggled against Clemson, and for the most part here today, they showed up and played much better than they had the last couple of weeks. Got a lot of resolve, man. Third and long, Travis from the pocket. Over the head of the intended receiver, and again, a lot of contact. Douglas, the intended target, Chase Jones in coverage. And the fans don't like the non-call. Fourth down and 15. 
But it looked like there was a lot of contact there right as that ball was being delivered. Well, out and up there by Douglas. A lot of hand fighting, but also more hand fighting from Jones. And this yeah. is interesting. They're, after all that, they're going to try a field goal. They didn't believe in Fitzgerald to attempt extra points, and now he's on there for a 50-yard field goal. They figure better chance of him making this than them converting on fourth and 15, because you keep the game alive if he somehow makes this. You still need to recover an onside kick and get a touchdown. He missed from 29 yards earlier in the game. And now Dave Clawson. Delay game. Offense. Boy, that's bad. It's still fourth down. To take a delay a game there, I understand wow. oh, you don't want to rush the snap or anything like that, but now you make it a 55-yarder. Calamity of errors here Wow! in this fourth quarter for Florida State. Fitzgerald, 4 of 8 on the season. 18 of 28 for his career, and his career long is 45 yards. This is a 55-yarder to keep Florida State's hopes alive for the moment. And it's no good. Wide to the right, Wake Forest takes over, and the Demon Deacons 113 away from victory. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes for Florida State at some of the most critical junctures of this ball game. Don't take anything away from Wake Forest. They showed up here today and showed a lot of resolve, a lot of metal. They're going to walk away with a quality road victory. Mike Norvell not going to be happy when he goes back and looks at this film. But that one's not on the kicker. That's, no. that's on the other players out Absolutely. there and on the coaching staff to take a delay a game in that situation. Absolutely. like a delay a game coming out of a commercial break. What a win for Wake Forest. After the emotion of falling in double overtime to Clemson last week, the Demon Deacons with a huge bounce back win in Tallahassee. They've knocked off Florida State now three straight times. And it's their first win here in 14 years. The last time they beat him was the last time these two teams met when both were ranked. Just an outstanding job by Dave Kloss and his staff, this veteran football team. But last week to the wayside, understand they're playing a good Florida State football team. It's a great crowd here early. To be able to come in here and get this victory says a lot about this program. And hey, don't count this Wake Forest team out and the Atlantic Division race. Remember, they still have that championship belt. You asked Dave Clawson, are you concerned at all about bouncing back after everything that happened last week? He said, I've got 39 players on my roster in at least year four. I trust the leaders on this team. And boy, did they deliver big. Final score, 31-21.